Okay, I'm back, dear friends. Today we'll be looking at the machine on the hex box, which is Postman. I've already spun the machine earlier, and this is the IP address of this target. As usual, I'd like to use the Pong box, which is online payload OS provided by the hex box to do this penetration. Before we begin today's journey, if you don't mind, please consider to subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. This will help me very much. So I think in this episode with this machine, I'd like to look at how to interact with Redis database, and、um, furthermore, how to. Exploit and get initial for the hold on the target through interacting the Redis database. Then, afterwards, I'd like to show you how to make elevation privilege escalation. So enough said. Let's just get started. So then we can switch over to the viewer. And I've already done the map scanning. As you can see over here, the three open ports. Sorry, the four open ports. I use the options like sync scan, the virtual scan, the default script scan, and also the comprehensive scan by the option of dash p dash. From map scanning results, as you can see, as you can see over here. Yeah, the first one is twenty-two, which is running as SSH surface, and also its corresponding version information. As you know, this version doesn't have any vulnerability. Of course, we can use the search sprite utility to test that. The second one is eighty, which is running HTTP surface, and also the actual version information. Which is Apache Two. Next one is six three seven nine, which is running Redis, and、uh, this is the yeah very nowadays very popular database. Can be used as a cache, and、uh, also give us the version information. Yeah, which is this one. So I think this one is a bit old. Okay. And、uh, the next one is ten thousand, which is running HTTP, but、uh, also give us information about the application, which is mini server, and also the version information. Okay, so what we are going to do next is to do yeah emulation for the eighty port number first. Let's open up our browser. And put the IP address of the target into the address bar of the browser. Yeah, as it's loading, I think maybe we need to refresh this one again. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, we got the home page back, and this is under construction coming soon. So I think the first thing we need to do now is to check the source code, but、uh, yeah, which doesn't reveal any useful information, and also we can check whether this side has robots file, but it doesn't. So what we are going to do next then is to use the legal tool to do some emulation. Let's hit enter. Yeah, this nigger is one of my favorite tool to emulate web web application because it will go through all possible misconfigurations, some vulnerabilities, or some common files or directories. Although, yeah, the embedded word list in nigger is a bit small. So anyway, yeah, we let the run. And of course, we have already got some. Yeah, I think this some sort of the default one, which cannot give us any useful entry to the target. So I'd like to 
cancel this one and then we can use the go buster to do some immersion director immersion and the put the IP address of a target and the, the word list as always I'd like to use the dear buster directory txt back let's hit enter yeah we got one another directory which is upload we can manually access this directory upload upload sorry <laughs> upload yeah there's some some images their format is png and gpg but uh, those pictures cannot give us any useful information at all so now we can go back to our terminal in the meantime we can emulate manually the another port number you know the 10,000 we can put the IP address over the target and also the put the port number in the end let's hit enter yeah document follows yeah we'll be redirect to this host name and the the application is SSL or HTTPS instead so I think we need to put this host to our host file let's do it now we can open another tab echo IP address of the target and the host name and sudo of course we need to use the sudo oh sorry post main right sudo t append and etc okay let's now go back to our browser refresh this page or maybe we just uh, click this one yeah of course we can accept the risk and continue yeah we got the web mean and uh, but uh, at this point we do not have any credentials but we can try like a domain with a domain as a password to see whether the target has a weak credential vulnerability but it doesn't have and also you can try to use like uh, login bypass technique but uh, yeah which cannot work in this case so now we go back to our terminal I think I don't want to waste more time to emulate the directories and so what can we do next you know I think from the a map scanning results we can know yeah the target is running redis so I think now we use the redis CLI command 2 to try to connect to the target and the option is H and uh, the IP address of the target okay we log in and uh, no any authentication required so we can make some immigration keys but right now no no key yeah because why we can do this because the the version information of the redis is a bit of snow from the map scanning results so i think now we can yeah we can utilize this yeah this low version try to get the the shell and uh, although the metasploit has a module which can help us help us to do that but uh, i can tell you when i did this machine the first time i tried to utilize that metasploit module to get the shell but uh, failed so now what can we do next maybe we can upload our yeah our the public key to the target because here yeah we can we can write 
we can save the information into the local into the file locally. I mean on the target. So I let me sh show you. Okay. So first thing we need to generate the key pairs with uh, command key, and uh, of course I need to get the current pass first because I want to save the the key pairs under this current directory and we can use ssh key gem and let's hit enter and we can put the full pass of our current working directory and the the name file name is id rsa yeah no passphrase as you can see we have already generated key pairs and now we need to, yeah, we need to, because as you can see, we can cut the public key. You know, we need to make sure the, you know, the when we write this data, I mean the public data to the file, and we need to make sure the in the front and at the end has some blank lines, bl blank lines, so. So the 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 target system when the target system read the public key, he will the, he will make sure he can read correctly or properly the public key data. We must make sure the public key it begins from the fresh line or new line. Okay. So how to do it? We can add uh, echo, and uh, the option is E. It means escape. And we need to put two line in front of the this public key, and we can cut the ID pa. And also at the end, we need to add two new lines, and of course no data. We can. Okay, and then we can txt. All right, we can cut this file. As you can see, yeah, in front of the public key, there's some blank lines. Also, this is also true for the for the for the end. Okay, of this file. So I think now we need to get more information. We need to get the current working directory. Yeah, I, I think now we are under this directory. And uh, I think now we maybe we are we are locking us the knocking out the Redis. I mean this is the home directory for the Redis. And to com to confirm that we can change Directly, dir to ssh to see whether the result or response is okay. If it's okay, then we can know. Yeah, indeed, we are inside the Redis home directory. Let's hit enter. Yeah, okay. Then we can config get the. Director information. Now we need to. We need to, yeah. We need to set a key, and the key value is is a public key data. And let's do it. We can cut, and we can use the Redis C O I C O I H, and the target IP address. But we need to use the option X, yeah, and uh, it it means read from the local file, and uh, set the key. We can set the key name is Bob. Okay, it doesn't matter. And uh, I think I have already configured properly. Let's try it. Yeah. Okay. So now we go back to our Redis. We if we display the keys. As you can see, we have already 
set the key, and we can get the key information. A get a bob. As you can see, we have already got the key, and we want to write this key into the database, and the, the database name. But of course, we need to set. We need to configure the database file name first, and to do that, we can config set and uh, db file name, and we can call it authorized keys. Maybe I need to use double quotes. I think uh, single one is also work. Authorized keys. Okay. Set. Okay. Now we can save. Yeah, we have already configured our database. File name is this one, and we will save our data to this database. Okay. Save. Yeah. No problem. So now, think I think we can log in, and、uh, log in to the target, and we have to know that the username is Redis, right? Redis, and the target IP address. Let's hit enter. As you can see, we successfully log in as user Redis, and、uh, so what can we do? Now is to do for the more local immersion. We can go to the home directory, and the go, we can go to the mat directory. But、uh, so far, we don't have permission to read user flag. Also, we can check whether this current user. But、uh, of course, we don't have the. Password for the Redis, so I just、uh, tried three different attempts. So what can we do now? Maybe we need to upload our Nimpier's shell script, right? And、uh, as you can see, I have already, yeah, got this Nimpier shell script ready on our own machine. Then we can set up the. Web server by Python. Let's hit enter. Now we can double get. Nimpiers, and we can make it executable. And we can run this Nimpier shell script. You know, for the local privilege escalation, the Nimpiers. Share script is very very important. Yeah, we must have that to on hand or at hand, because this will go through all possible local exploits, misconfigurations, process informations, SUID information. Yeah, many many different types of information can be emulated out. So we just let. Let it run and、uh, wait for this to be finished, and we can scroll up to see whether we can find some yeah interesting information. However, nothing big one. Nothing big. We can find. All right. Maybe we need to do the emulation manually. For example, we can go to the root directory, and we can go to the var directory. Backups, but nothing there. Yeah, nothing there. Opt. Yeah, we got one very important file. We can cut. I think this must be private key for the mat user. So then we can make a copy, right? Yeah, make sure we 
copy the whole data of this private key and then we can open up another tab and we can mat uh, ID okay and paste in here and uh, we can yeah of course we, I need to modify the permission to use this private key then we can SSH and uh, mat and the username is mat right let's hit enter yeah we need to provide the passphrase to use this private key and we need we can use the SSH to John we can locate SSH to John Python script yeah we can use the Python 2 and uh, make a copy and uh, the hash then we can use the John Reaper word list USR share what that lists lock you and the mat hash let's hit enter yeah to see whether yeah we have already no such a file what the lists us oh sorry i forgot to put the extension which is txt let's hit enter to run it again yeah, we got the password for this private key and then we can make a copy and note it down to our notebook. And then we can SSH again, mat and uh, the username and the, the target IP address. Let's hit enter. Then we can paste our password but connection closed. Although we successfully retrieved the passphrase for the public key, but uh, we cannot uh, make a successful collection. Maybe we can put the V option to see what happened. Paste in here. Yeah, connection closed. And then if we go back to our yeah, this one we can cut the etc, ssh, sshd, as you can see, yeah, because the configuration has already denied the user mat, so of course we cannot uh, log in as mat user to the target via ssh, however, maybe the password is reused which is computer 2008. As you can see, we have already successfully switched our shirt to this one. So then we can get the user flag without any problem. And then we can run the sudo and uh, computer 2008. But uh, no. So what can we do now? You know, I think we as we have already got the the users username and uh, password i mean the compilations of username and the password and then also from the map scanning results we can know that the yeah the target is running webbing so i i think we can log in as this username and password we can mat to see whether this is working and uh, password computer 2008 let's log in sign in don't save yeah as you can see we have already successfully logging to the web main. and also we got the version information we can so we can use the google search engine to make uh, research to see whether this CMS or web meme, web meme, web meme 
And the version information, exploit. Yeah, I think uh, there's some exploit. For example, you can download from the GitHub. But also, as you can see, the Rapid7 has module. Yeah, this one. So we can make a copy. Of course, if the Metasploit has specific module which can work for this vulnerability or exploit, this should be our first choice to exploit, okay? So now I think we can open up another tab and we can launch our Metasploit console. And I think we can use this, yeah, this module. We can make a copy, right? Because I don't want to search or manually type in anymore. All right, we can paste in here. Yeah, of course, you can try this one. But, uh, you know, at this point, I'm not sure whether the target has the interpreter or environment to run po so i'd like to change payload to another one reverse all right let's maybe we can use the netcat because we know of course we can, can by run command run we which command to to see yeah netcat is indeed there so now we can go back to our Metasploit console. So then we can sh show options. Set the local, local hard to our own machine. Okay. And uh, set the local port number to 666. And also we need to set the remote hard to our target. And we need to set the user name use a limb to mat right and the password computer 2008 show options again to make sure we have already configured all required fields and i think we need to set the ssl to two so ssl two and let's run it to see whether this module can work and get the root privilege. Yeah, as you can see, the command shell session one opened. It means that this, this module indeed works. So we can run the ID. Yeah, we are root user. Then we can go to the root directory and list files. And we can cat the root flag here. So, okay, all right. So that's pretty much it. I hope to see you in the next one. And um, have a nice day. Bye.